Hello everybody. It has been a long month, but we are back. Whoops, I guess I really meant to do slides other. Dupes. Um, we are back with Unhindered by Coding for the first time in almost exactly a month, probably a little more than a month, um, with episode 62, um, where we're, I'm continuing to explore Rust and learn cool things. Um, a little, well, hello, Azitsu. Wonderful to see you again. Um, a little admin, uh, the I've moved one of the streams, used to do two streams on Saturday, um, found that to be a lot, so I'm moving the morning stream on Saturday to Sunday, so there'll still be this stream from 10 to noon on Tuesday morning, my time, uh, stream tomorrow night, Wednesday nights from 7 to 9, uh, stream Saturday afternoon from 2 to 4, and Sunday morning from 10 to noon. And the plan at the moment is to try to mix things up a little bit. Um, I've gotten kind of bogged down in the evolutionary computation stuff because it's really interesting and I care about it. Um, but I don't know that it makes the best viewing. Uh, and so was, I'm going to um, plan on doing advent of code exercises on Wednesday night and uh, Saturday morning. Um, and then use the Tuesday morning and uh, Sunday morning um, streams to do uh, um, evolution computation and or the web app, um, which I do want to return to. And Izitsu, I, I had a look at the uh, example that you shared so is it to shared? I ought to be able to find this. Uh, where are my notes? Um, uh, that there we are. That's the link I want. Uh, copy. Uh, bump. Go away. So is it to? No, that clearly did not do the right thing. Come on. Yeah, go away. Um, uh, there we go. Let's try that. Boop. There we go. So, is it to share this or not? Uh, oh, I got, somebody got a dot at the front of it. No, that looks right. That's weird. Uh, I thought that was going to be the right thing. Um, well, let's just search for this. Cloudflare. Here we go. I think that will be, yes, this example. Um, and, um, uh, this works. Um, and seems to use Cloudflare at, to do OAuth with GitHub. Um, so I f feel like this is an important thing to understand um, and look at. It's written in JavaScript instead of Rust, but uh, we should never let perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, and if we can understand and make the JavaScript work, maybe we can figure out how to make a Rust version work as well. So this JavaScript is what actually gets deployed uh, as the Cloudflare worker code. And the HTML, one thing that's a little weird, and I don't know, it just smells off to me from a security perspective, but um, I don't, this is an area where I'm not expert enough to know how weird I should feel about it, but, um, let's make this a little bigger. Um, there, so this is the code for the page, the, the HTML. Um, so we would have to have something like this in our U code. Um, so this would be like some of the, uh, stuff generated with you and there's this um, uh, 
there's this bit, this script bit here that's in JavaScript, which extracts the code from the URL and then removes it. So if there is a code, then it calls login code and the function login, the first thing it does is it removes the code from the URL and rewrites the um, uh, path in the sort of history bar to not have the code in it. I think the intent there is that you want the code to be private um, and the uh, the worker is sending the code to this bit of HTML as a query param. So the question mark code equal right here as a way of getting it to the HTML. And, but you wouldn't want to make that visible to everybody. Uh, and so they're hacking around it by just rewriting the URL to remove it. And that smells off to me. Like, I don't, it seems, it seems like there would be ways to get around that. Um, uh, if nothing else, you could presumably write your own version of this page without the remove the code bit and you just be able to grab the code. So um, I don't know that this is a great way to move the code from the Cloudflare worker to your system. Um, now, it's possible that a better alternative would be, well, A, it's possible that I'm wrong and that somehow this is actually fine. Um, and so, yes, I think is it, Sue, your comment is exactly what people tend to recommend, is that you don't send the code uh, from the server, you hold it. Um, so we'd have to use the KV storage or some similar um, Cloudflare worker storage option to hold the code and KV would be nice because you could imagine actually multiple users using the web app at the same time and you'd want a code associated with each username. Um, so the username, the GitHub usernames as keys and the codes as values would make a lot of sense. And then the, as you say, the Cloudflare worker has to proxy all the requests, which I think is doable, but it seems like kind of a nuisance um, in part because um, it means that we will make far more worker requests than I was initially expecting. I was kind of thinking that we would only need to talk to the Cloudflare worker when we logged in and that it would be very hard to like crank through the free usage that way. But if we're sending every request through the worker, then uh, that can be considerably more. Um, uh, and we don't really need every request to go through the worker. All the getting, like getting the lists of repositories in an organization, that doesn't need to be authenticated. We've been doing it already and we weren't authenticated, so clearly it's doable. Um, but when we get to actually archiving repositories, that is going to require authenticate being logged in. Like you don't want just random people um, archiving your repositories. And uh, every archive request, every repository that you want to archive has to be done in a single request. There doesn't seem to be anything in the API that lets you sit, archive a batch of repositories. So we will need to make an authenticated request for every um, 
uh, archive that we want to request, which, you know, could be 50 or 100. That's not the end of the world. Like, so, and again, not letting perfect be the enemy of the good. I think that if we can make that work, yay, that's fine. Um, but it does mean, I think, some substantial... I don't think we can use this code as it is, um, at least not in a simplistic way, because we do have to do, add all the proxy stuff in. So we kind of have to figure out what is going to be handled by the worker directly and what's going to be proxied and then sent back by the worker. Um, uh, and when I tried doing some proxy stuff months ago, nothing ever seemed to work. Um, so, bleh, grumpy about that. Um, but I, I kind of suspect that that was because I was trying to run the worker locally and that I need to actually deploy the worker for that to play out because I think it just doesn't, the the DNS doesn't work right if you're locally deployed, um, which makes testing and development a pain, but, um, you know, we, could, we can work around that. So, um, so I don't know, we could... I had thought of, of doing, um, well, hello there. Thanks for following. Um, mim, mimic, gar, mm, oh, wow. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Mimicker, God, yes, but welcome. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah, okay. Um, got all excited and it's spam. Um, so, um, we could uh, choose to um, actually get into this. Um, it wasn't clear to me this morning what would be the best plan, whether we wanted to work on benchmarking, uh, cleaning up the benchmarking on the evolution computation stuff, or... Um, <laughs> that's a very generous interpretation um it's been a while and so i got that um so uh so i don't know there aren't a lot of people here at the moment um so does anybody here care whether we like wrestle with um uh the evils of uh trying to proxy stuff uh, with Cloudflare workers, um, or whether we just work on um, benchmarking um, for the evolution of computation system. Anybody have any thoughts? Um, what would I like to do? What would I like to do? Well, I would, I'm torn, which is why I kind of threw it out to you folks. Um, I, okay. I think, I think I'm going to do benchmarking. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is I wasn't really prepared for doing um, the Cloudflare stuff. And I have this feeling that I'm going to get into it and there's going to be a bunch of potentially um, there, there's going to be lots of like codes and stuff um, that I'm going to need to be careful about managing. And so I kind of feel like I really need to do that offline. Um, and so maybe we benchmark today and we try Sunday to come back to OAuth. Um, and I do some homework between now and then. I've got some time set aside. 
on Wednesday where I can work on that um, and see if I can get a version of this code working either in JavaScript or Rust, doesn't really matter to me. Um, uh, and then, even though clearly we should do everything in Rust, um, he says. Um, and then uh, see if I can sort out the um, uh, proxy um, stuff. And if we had a basic thing up and running, then, um, and I knew how the various secret codes and stuff worked out, then I'd worry a little less about um, inadvertently um, exposing things that I shouldn't expose. So I say, let's just go with um, uh, benchmarking. The one disadvantage of benchmarking, and, and I really do want to, um, like, I think if, if I, if no one else cared about anything, I would probably spend most of my time on the evolution of computation thing because I do want to get, I want to get a genetic programming system going so I can do some comparisons. Um, and if there, if it works well, um, I think that can have a significant impact in the space where I do research. Um, whereas I think the, the ICE repos project is interesting and fun and I would use it. And I don't know that anybody else ever would. I don't think it's going to ever have any, you know, grand impact on the world. Um, so I am fundamentally more interested in the evolution of computation stuff. Um, I just need to let it not take over the world. Um, uh, cause I do want to like work on some other things. So let's do that. Um, cause I'm just a wimp. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. So I have written um, over the past, well, er, mostly early on, a variety of kind of not great benchmarks, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, so I think th there's some cleanup that needs to happen here. Also, there's, I think we probably want some more focused benchmarks in places. Um, so there are run benchmarks that benchmark full runs. Um, um, so like, you know, running serially on count ones, running in parallel on count ones, um, things like that. Um, and those are going to be important for providing big picture timing. But I also know that the hard way that at one point Lexicase, um, that Lexicase was much slower than um, uh, like tournament selection. And so it's probably worth having some uh, benchmarks on at least some of the selection operations. Um, the other thing that this gets at, let's see, where did um, lib, yeah. Um, right now, um, the, I don't think we have any benchmarking for things like two point crossover or mutate one over length probably would make sense in a perfect world to have some benchmarking for those as well. I don't know how much time we want to spend just benchmarking every little thing, but um, I do think that having um, a little richer benchmarking probably wouldn't be a terrible plan. Um, and currently, just as a structural issue, we have Childmaker as a trait and um, we have some implementations um, for uh, just these different uh, collections of, of uh, traits. Um, but the only implementation is over here lib. Um, so, 
this two-point crossover mutate Childmaker is the only implementation of Childmaker. And I don't know... I mean, this is not very flexible at the moment. Um, it just got dropped in here um, as a way of making things run somewhere months ago and never got really cleaned up or moved anywhere. Um, this is pretty specific. Um, it probably would be more general to have something that takes um, a Uh, like a recombinator um, or a sequence of recombinators in this case um, as an argument and makes children with that combination of um, tools. And it could be something like what we did um, in weighted selector where weighted implements um, selector uh, and wraps a vector. You know, that actually probably should be bigger, shouldn't it? Now that I think about it. Yeah, that would be better. Um, uh, out of habit. It's been, it's been so long, I've forgotten all the things. Um, but this implement selector but holds a group of selectors um, and uses them um, by selecting one out. Well, we could do the same thing with um, we could have a recombinator thing that actually holds a vector of recombinators and applies them one at a time um, the, the one thing that gets a little weird about that is some recombinators take multiple parents and other recombinators take single parents. So crossover takes two parents and mutation takes one parent. Um, realistically, it's not com... I'm, so maybe I'm overthinking this because realistically, you usually have either just a mutation or you have some recombination possibly followed by a mutation. There, we don't tend to use all of the possible combinations of things. Um, and uh, so we could do something where it's a vector of recombinators and only the first one's allowed to take two arguments or maybe it's just a mutation or a crossover followed by an optional mutation. Just keep it super simple. Um, but uh, this isn't this isn't a terribly flexible part of the program. Um, uh, it, and it, we could try to make that better. Um, I'm not sure what the better looks like exactly. So I don't know that I want to like mess with it right now. Um, unless somebody's got some grand idea um, for a particularly shiny way. I know, is it so you did some thinking um, and sketched out some stuff months ago about um, some ways of possibly doing um, these. And I think one of the things that you suggested, which could be done is if these things took the um, population or a selector as an argument, then they could call that as often as they want. Um, and then, then in th they, they stop being different based on how many arguments they take because they all take just one argument, which is a selector. Um, and... Um, they would then pull individuals out of that um, as they need them. Uh, and that would um, potentially simplify things. I think one of the... Yeah. 
So that could be a way of dealing with that. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been, it has been such a long time. I'm, I'm reconstructing things in my head as well. Do I care now is the question, I think. Um, or... Yeah, I think I do care now. I think that I think that that would be a good thing to clean up because as we move to genetic programming, we're going to have a different set of recombinators and having some flexibility in how that all gets done would be nice. Um, and so we should, in theory, be able to just generalize childmaker here um in a useful way so let me let me make a branch generalize child maker so that might be what we end up spending most of today on um and that would be fine so i'm gonna start by just moving all of this code into Childmaker. And now, if I'm remembering slash understanding the, the recommendation would be to have actually this be in its own file inside a Childmaker file folder um, instead of tacking it onto the trait because this would be an impl of that trait and it would make more sense um, so in the way that say best is an impl of selector and lexicase is an impl for selector this is an impl for child maker and so having it be in its own file would be reasonable so I think I want child maker badoomp and then I want this guy to actually go in here. Oh no, 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 hang on. There is still gonna be a child maker out here separate. So actually what I really wanted is just this code to go in there. Take you out again. Um, uh, two point XO mutate And then that goes in there. And I seem to have somehow Oh, it's probably just a little confused about the what kind of file this is because it's not ever mentioned anywhere in the top file because the top file has to have the pub mod. So this guy's got to have pub mod 2.xo mutate. Okay, then this will totally fail in a whole host of ways because we have to import a bunch of stuff. That one should be easy. Um, now, I want to look at Childmaker. It... So Childmaker does talk about selectors and populations, but doesn't talk about EC individuals. So this would be where having a selector would potentially be useful because the selector hides 
the details of the individual. Um, and so, uh, in theory, and Childmaker currently takes a population and a selector on that, or a type that implements population and a type that implements selector on that population. And that gives us enough that we really shouldn't need this individual stuff um, in a perfect world. Um, actually, can I maybe work? Yeah, you do. Hmm. <laughs> So this is a particular implementation. Well, let's for now go ahead and do all the imports and then we may be able to make all that go away downstream. Um, uh, Cause I think, oh, no, stop it. I think we probably would like a more general thing, which may ultimately actually go back up in uh, the, um, oh, where's the struct? Yeah, that's a really good point. I didn't copy enough, did I? I need this code here as well. Aren't you clever? Thank you. That's why we have fine people like you here to help save me for myself. Look at that. That would be better. And why are you grumpy? Oh, you need to be imported. Ah, imported as well. And you need to be imported. So many imports. Oh, and some needs to be imported. Okay. So this all compiles now. And uh lib doesn't because lib refers to 2.xo somewhere where do you oh, right there and it doesn't know where to find it so we need to import uh inaccessible i probably didn't make it pub indeed i did not so pub struct and now lib will give me a different error and it will say, Hey, you should probably import that. And I'll say fine. And we're still grumpy. Why are we grumpy? Function new is private in this guy. Oh, okay. Pub new and why are we grumpy here? Oh, we need another import. La 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 la. We're going to probably need another import to get those. And we'll probably need one from mutate. Yep. And, and is that going to make all that happy? That makes that happy. And lib is happy. So everything now compiles and runs. Cargo run. Oh, what is it? Bin. Uh, oops. Ah. Um, oh no, that's not, it's going to be in here, right? I list my binaries. G A. Gen G A. There we go. Simply do that. Um, 
Boo, ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo. And clearly some unused imports. Hey, that looks great. Okay. So I would need to come back to lib. Had probably a bunch of unused imports now. Because those were just there for um, the child maker. Um, uh, anybody else? Um, oh, it doesn't like, Clippy doesn't like that this ends in Childmaker because that's the module name. So we could rename that. Uh, getting rid of that part and voila clippy is become happy okay so we've moved everything and this now works um so let's see if we can generalize this in a useful way um to Probably a hmm, probably I'm guessing the general version just goes in here. Because uh, we're just going to add um, hmm. I can't have a struct and a trait with the same name. Because I had this thought that it would be kind of useful to set, call this new generalized thing, just call it Childmaker as well. But that's not going to work. The system won't let me have those two names. Um, so I'm going to need another name. In which case, maybe it does make sense to go ahead and have a subfile here in the childmaker directory. Actually, I should commit what I've done um, since we know that that's in a working place right now. Um, so, boom. Move two point crossover plus mutate um, into. Uh, a new file uh, moves the kind of hacked together uh, child maker using two point crossover Whoop, can't spell and mutation into its own file. Um, boom. Now back. So I think let's go ahead for now. We'll just make a new file. Um, um, which um, uh, we could call pipeline.rs and so we're going to need to have don't need an extra line there and actually don't need all these blank lines here probably um, unless this format actually want oh whoa what did I do there help uh, oh, I somehow showed, uh, I did something that brought up the commit messages. Is that happening everywhere? No, that's just this file. If I close that file and reopen it. Okay. Whew. Don't know what I did there. Um, if I format the file, the document, will it, oh, it did that. Okay. That's actually much prettier. Um, in fact, I like that sufficiently. I'm going to amend the previous commit. 
Yeah, I really should get um, uh, the cargo format tool in my tool chain to yell at me when I am not formatting things the way I should be um, or to just auto format them when I commit them. Um, uh, and I haven't gotten around to doing that. So it's been rattling around. It's been mentioned a few times and it's been rattling around as a thing to do. Clearly I haven't gotten to it. Okay. So pipeline's going to look something like this. Um, and then we'll need to take a new, so actually it'll basically have the same structure. Make you go away for a second. So this will be pipeline and pipeline and pipeline. And then all of this will have to be different. Um, and I'm going to just say to do bang. And I'll comment all this out. So it's not in the way. And this will need, ah, this would be a place where I bet I could have said self here and I would have done myself a favor because then I wouldn't have to change these two places. Oh, nice. So actually, I probably want to come back here and change that. Actually, why did Clippy not fuss at me about that? Oh, because Clippy didn't like that. Um, it wants a lifetime if I, that's interesting. If I make that change, it wants a lifetime. But if I don't make that change, it doesn't. Okay. Do both of them require? Okay. So changing that one breaks things. Changing this one also breaks things. So changing either one of them breaks things and requires a lifetime. But if I don't do that, I don't have to have a lifetime? Well, that's interesting. And I never use yeah, if I change both, I think that's where it, it first indicated that I had an issue to me. Yeah, so if I change it both, I need, it says I need a lifetime here. Um, to match, presumably, this lifetime here. And it's interesting that there is no, there is, there is the reference to the lifetime in the, impl statement, which is necessitated by the fact that the struct depends on the lifetime, but we never actually use the lifetime down here. So the Rust compiler was presumably inferring the necessary lifetimes when these both said 2.xo mutate, but it couldn't infer them or it wouldn't infer them when we change them to self. And I don't claim to understand why that would be. Um, there's no doubt some sort of deep um, seated weirdness in the um, way the compiler can infer things that self is too general and it's not able to do the inference. But if I change that to have that lifetime, then... I can use self. Well, that's odd. Huh. Um, now, is there a place down here where I should use self? I think the answer is no. Because there's no reference to 2.xo mutate down there. And there's no reference there. Okay. So, um, in fact, I'm going to... 
make sure we still run. Me, 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 me. And I guess I really ought to do cargo test. That would be a smart plan. Do, 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 boom, test all pass. So then I'm going to, in fact, um, amend that in as, well, maybe I'll make that a separate commit. Um, uh, cause that's not really what I was doing before. So, um, you self in, uh, two point XO mutate simple, um, used two point XO mute, oops, XO mutate in two places where I could have used self, um, uh, which became clear when I copy pasted that code into the new pipeline implementation of Childmaker. This fixes that. This required adding a lifetime uh, in a, uh, I'm not entirely sure why it wasn't necessary before, um, but presumably when we had the explicit types, the compiler could infer the lifetime in a way that it now can't. Boom. Ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Okay. So back to pipeline. Uh, oh, no, back to pipeline. Uh, so yeah, we definitely want cell, uh, self here and self here. And I'll just put the Lifetime in, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, so now we need to add child maker here or pipeline here, pub mod pipeline. And now lots of things will break because lots of stuff is not right. So the struct needs a scorer. That's still going to be true. We've got to be able to take, oh, now I hadn't noticed this. The score here is tied to a Boolean slice, which means that if we were to want to make this um, more general for other kinds of evolutionary computation, like genetic programming, our genome's not going to be a Boolean slice. It's going to be something else. So that is a generalization we are going to have to deal with. Um, uh, I think we can overlook it right now, but we're going to need to deal with it um, downstream um, as an early thing before we can get the GP part of the world to work. So that actually, I'm going to actually go here. Uh, oh, interesting. So none of this is tied to there being a bit string. Huh. It's only when we have something concrete here because the child maker needs to return an individual. Let's see if we come back here, this will be make child returns an individual. We have to have a way of scoring to construct the individual. Um, unless we add to the individual trait, 
Um, oh, interesting. Individual. That's actually P individual, so it doesn't actually take us to where I would want it to go. Um, so we could add... Right now we just require generate... We could add a uh, so generate generates a random one. We could also add a probably a new um, that would take a genome and create an individual, and then the scoring would be embedded in that because it probably makes more sense for the scoring to be in the individual than in the child maker, I would think. Because uh, the individual knows about the genome and the test results. Um, and the scoring is really just creating the mapping between the genome and the test results, sort of filling this field in. Um, so maybe it would make sense to have a implementation or a I guess that would be a new trait uh, and actually where where is that coming from oh it's this trait down here duh um, those seem to be in kind of the wrong order but um, and then where where do we use generate? And what does that look like? Yeah, so we run the test. So this is the scoring. Um, so really, we could have a constructor that takes the genome and then the rest of this would be the same. Um, and in fact, we probably would call that constructor here where I've highlighted this code instead of having that code. We wouldn't need to repeat that. We could just... Um, uh, have the one place call the other place. So now the question is, do I want to deal with that first or second? I think I'm going to deal with it later. Let's deal with the pipeline because I've got that in my head. Um, but I need to make some notes um, or I'm going to forget that I need to do this. Um, and I guess do, I guess the question is do we want a is, is, is that a new trait or is that just adding a new method or a I don't know maybe new is the wrong name if I add it to this trait but is it a is new a thing in individual? Is it a thing in generate? Or is it a thing in another trait altogether? And I'm not sure I know the answer to that question. So, to do. Um, uh, need to add a new or similar method. that 
takes a genome and returns a scored individual containing that genome. It's not clear to me at the moment whether that should be an entirely new trait like generate a method in generate a method in individual um, okay I'll just leave that comment like that and we will go back to pipeline 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 come back to pipeline um and we'll just for now leave it tied to slices of booleans and we'll just look the other way so a struct pipeline needs a score and it also needs a I don't know that I have a name for that. Um, what did I call? Where are two point XO and mutate defined, and how are they? Um, so they are just okay. So we have a trait linear crossover and a trait linear mutation, and they are they provide those methods and that's gonna be not what we want because um, we actually want a more general we need a trait that defines a function that takes a selector and a random number generator and returns a uh, in this case um, vector of T um, <clears throat> oh and these so these are written to actually act on a particular genome so they're taking a genome and another genome and returning a genome um, and then I implement them for this particular type of genome but I don't have a genome trait here I just have this um, self 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 which could work um, I could imagine a universe where you might want to take a one kind of genome and return a different kind of genome in which case self isn't going to be good um, and it you'd want to just ha you know, take a genome and return something that impulse genome but that's probably more generality than we need right now uh, so hmm. but we are going to need to well linear crossover self 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 we could just add a trait here that takes a selector and a thread pub trait um, recombinator that takes
self and selector selector and range mute thread range and return self and then we would impl recombinant let's see what's this gonna look like So we could have pub trait linear crossover recom. This is terrible naming, but I think we'll just get rid of some things and the naming will get better. But I just want to see if this will even work. And so we'll implement recombinate. Oh, I meant to say um, recom, and it's not trait, pub trait. Oh, no, I, I, I do want that. La, 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 la. Um, and that has to implement recombinator. And that means we have to implement recombinate self. Selector, selector, range, and mute thread, self, boom, to do, bang. And that would be now. Is that a trait or is that a struct? Um, what am I doing? Um, the combinator is a trait because it's a general thing that you want stuff to do. Linear crossover combinator is going to be a particular implementation of that, which is. going to be somewhat general is that true um or is it going to be fully concrete well i i know we can make it concrete so let's do that for starters i feel like this is going to be overly Um, so just say impl recombinator for linear crossover recom. Okay. Why are you grumpy? Trade objects must include the dying keyword. Gotcha. And does this mean we're going to need a reference and a lifetime? I bet the answer to that is yes. Right? We're going to need uh, so that's not a good place to look. Child maker. What does child maker do? So, no, it just takes a reference to these things. It's S selector. Oh, but, ah, right. So we actually want the um, recombinator to te be generic in a type.
and then this is just going to be of type s reference to s And that's going to have to be import. Oop, ah, no. Wasn't the right place to be. Import it. No, don't do that. Stop it. Quick fix. Be a little careful. Here we go. And that means this is going to need to be the same thing. This is going to be and we will need this business is going to have to go over here and this will just be recombinator PS. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and so now recombinate for a linear crossover recombinator is going to need to do these things. So first thing it's gonna to have to do is you have to get another parent from the selector. So other let other parent what can we do from other parent from selector? Apparently nothing. Um, select. That's what we want. So if we select another parent, now that requires that we have a population. So that means our recombinate method is Oh, you're right. Yeah, the self is definitely going to be a problem, isn't it? Because that's going to be a linear crossover recombinator, not an, a genome type. Yeah. So we're going to have to fix that. Okay, so that's broken. Um, frogs, just to make it yell. Um and then, so, but this population, we're going to need the population and a selector as arguments. So we're going to need a population of, it's a reference to P. And that means we're going to need a population that's a reference to P. Okay. So that takes care of that problem. Now, this is going to have to return a type. And this is where we really need a genome. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. Um, now we're in bit string, so we could for the moment just hack this and say this is going to be a vac of bools, which I think I even. Yeah, this bit string type. So since we're in bit string, I think we could say bit string, and then this would be bit string. Um, so I don't think it's P individual because this isn't actually scoring. And generating a full individual. This is just um, making a new genome out of the genomes of one or more parents. And then the point of uh, the child maker is to actually make the whole individual 
which is the scored genome. So the child maker uh, returns an actual individual. But at this point, we really just want the bit string because we want to be able to chain them and not rescore at every step. If we return an individual at every step, then we have to score at every step and that's wasteful, um, especially since the scoring is usually where the, ex the biggest expense is computationally. So good question, does individual have a genome type? And I think the answer is no. Yo, the, the answer is yes. Aha, so in fact, we could make this, hey, thanks for following. A minus 40. Um, uh, oh, and Mr. Halsey gave me a shout out. That's very cool. Um, thanks for being here. Um, so yeah, so we could actually make this general to the genome in individual, which means that we'd have to include the individual in all this genericization. Um, and does population contain the individual? Yeah, so population has the type individual. So we could, in theory, this could be P colon colon individual colon colon genome? No. I bet we have to say population bracket I here. Is that true? No. That is not true. Um, hello, uh, Kapatan, and um, and then Amanus forty again. Um, uh, P individual as individual, and that you put that in angle bracket. So I'm guessing we're talking uh, here. No, oh no, that would definitely be here. So this is going to be P individual as individual genome. Wow. Does that work? Okay, now I gotta t stop for a second, think about what that even does. That, you have just leapt out of my uh, grasp for frost. Um, so, okay. Population is a subtype individual. And that doesn't, yeah, that type doesn't say it is an individual, this is just a name here that is separate from this name here. That's a little confusing. Um, uh, oh, I have, so I don't think I ever understood, I never made an effort to understand um, how rating works in Twitch. Um, and so, uh, yeah, maybe I, that's a thing to deal with. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I don't think I'll attempt to wrestle with it right now, but the um, stream ends in 45 minutes. Maybe I'll look at it after uh, the stream ends. Um, so, um, but thank you for the suggestion. Um, I will definitely try to deal with that. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I guess I sort of thought rating was more about the gaming side of things and didn't appreciate that it was just a way of moving a group of people from one stream to another. So thank you. Um, uh, so yeah, so type here is just a name. Um, I mean, individual here is just a name that happens to connect to this other trait that we have, but that connection isn't um, fixed at this point. So here we're saying, where am I? Uh, yeah, here we're saying that type will be 
an implementation of the individual trait. And because it's an implementation of the individual trait, it now has a genome type. Woo, that's craziness. Ah, that's very cool. Um, yeah, Rust is a trip. Um, I like it. Welcome, new duck. Pleased to have you. This is very exciting. Um, okay, so we're returning some crazy genome action here, um, which means that now this can be generalized to uh, return the same thing. Um, P in individual as individual oops, colon genome, and we're going to need uh, to add. No, we don't have to add anything. Um, uh, let's reformat because this is getting a little weird. Okay. So we can get another parent, which is going to be a reference to, ah, so P is population individual. Oh, that's interesting. So it's actually inferring in some ways that P Oh, well, yeah, because we say P has to implement population right here. Um, so it's doing P as population, colon, colon, individual is the type um, here. Very cool. Um, yeah. Um, hey, oh, new duck. Um, and you're right. Genome is an associated type to the trait. So let's see if we go back here. Uh, this is individual, yeah. So genome is an associated type to the trait individual. And in the same way, population individual is an associated type for the trait population. And so we're here declaring that that associated type has to implement a trait that happens to have the same name. Um, Oh, and you think the individual comes from the selector. Uh, so this, I think I'm lost there. So selector does talk about individuals, right? Uh, no, yes, it, uh, only, so selector depends on population and re its return type is uh, the associated type for the, in the, whatever our population trait is. Um, but I think that, I mean, I think this has to be an individual for us to be able to get at the genome. Maybe we're talking across purposes. I don't know. Um, but I think we need this to be implement the individual trait so that we can get at the genome associated type here. Um, the selector actually returns an individual and we'll get the genome out of it here in a second. Um, so, uh, okay, so we have got two parents if we stick to uh, that assertion doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. Um, uh, well, 
Does it? Do we need those two things to be the same length? Probably not. Um, but right now I'm just kind of trying to implement linear crossover. So yeah, we'll go ahead and make them be the same. Um, so Izitsu says, but I don't see how, see where it says that P individual has to be an individual. Maybe the errors are masking the issue. Oh, um, could be. Um, but don't we, to get at this type, which I want to be the return type of recombinate, I need that to be the associated type of something that actually implements the individual trait. Um, oh, but your concern is that why does this as even compile? Because I could claim a duck is a lawnmower, but it doesn't make a duck a lawnmower. Um, and the type checker is going to have to confirm that this really does implement that. And we don't have anything that says that yet. Um, I think that's probably true. And I bet you're right that the errors are making a mess of things at the moment. Um, and that we might come back to this as need, we may need to declare somewhere um, that uh, P colon colon individual really is an individual. Um, so, um, okay. So let's try to get some of these other compiler errors out of the way and then um, we will hopefully uh, get uh, find out what's going on here. And the compiler errors, so pipeline's a mess at the moment because of this impl. Maybe if I just comment this whole impl out so that we don't have that mess in front of us. Oh, look, that added some compilation errors here. So maybe this gets to what you were saying, is it, Sue? Um, aha, exactly what you said. Aren't you clever? Um, so the trait bound P as population colon colon individual being of type individual is not satisfied. Trait individual is not implemented for P, blah, 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 blah. Consider further restricting the associated type P as population colon colon individual type individual. Um, so so I basically add a where clause that says that boom, 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 boom where P colon colon individual is of type or has type individual. Yeah. So if I'm understanding correct, is it so that was exactly the thing you were worried about? Is that true? Um, uh, and you're right, Amanis, that we will assume the population all has the same genome. Um, uh, if we wanted to have multiple genomes in a population, we would probably, I think that in most evolution computation systems, we would handle that by having multiple populations. Um, so at that point, you're getting into sort of ecosystems um, and you've got populations of gazelles and lions and house flies and different things, and they're all interacting um, and we're definitely not going down that road today. So yes, we can assume that the entire population has um, the uh, same um, genome. And I think given that we've introduced the where clause, I'm going to just do this because I think that, for me, that's a lot more readable, especially with the where clause is there. Um, and then something similar is gonna need to happen down here. 
you know, boom, 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 where um, P is going to be of type population, and S is going to be of type selector of P. And really, probably that P individual being of type individual probably makes more sense up there. And then this just becomes P and S. Yeah. Okay. That's cleaner. Okay. Awesome. Woo! So now, so this, if this is going to be some kind of general linear re crossover, I don't think I want to, um, Yeah, if we're doing, if this is basically kind of a uniform crossover, um, then it would make sense that we would, uh, in fact, really this ought to be, I think the, the more common name in the evolutionary computation universe is uniform crossover. Um, so I could just... Do that, and then I don't have such a name. So let's go ahead and assert. Ah, but now that requires that the parents or their genomes have a length. Which actually requires things about genome itself. So for this to make any sense, genome is gonna for uniform crossover genome is gonna have to be constrained to be something that is linear hmm and probably the simplest generalization would be to do something like T uh, T and I need that um, Yeah, P individual genome has type vec of T. And this is going to need to be T. So this isn't working. So I do have to do the P as me, me, me. P as, uh, no, P individual ah, as individual, individual, cannot spell. And why is this grumpy? Expected trait found vec. Oh, not a trait. So there's got to be some sort of trait. Um, oh, and you, so you're saying this could go in this line here. Oh, genome equal vec t. I get you. Hmm. So we're saying that P 
the associated type individual in the trait P is of type individual, where its associated type is a vector of type T. Whew, craziness. And I need, um, I need, uh, uh, I just, I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, am I going to do anything with it? Uh, maybe this doesn't need, maybe this doesn't, right now this, this doesn't have anything, so maybe I just don't need that. Hello, Bifall, Bipal, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Welcome to the chat. Um, uh, so, okay. So we're going to assume that the genome is a vector. And I assume there's probably a trait that vectors implement that would be more general than sort of pinning the genome to a thing. I could say the genome did implement some kind of sequentially trait. I'd have to look that up. Um, but I'm okay with just saying it's a vec at the moment. Um, uh, but maybe I'll leave a note. Um, should vec t be replaced with a trait? Um, a straight? Wow. Uh, so, so now we're going to go ahead and do the assertion, because we should be able to do the assertion. Um, uh, actually, we probably need to get the genome. So let our genome be self dot genome. Hello. Oh, oh, but self, oh, self is, self is problematic. Yeah, because it's not really self anymore. It's actually, we're selecting, we're not acting on a genome. Um, self is, a, is the recombinator itself. And I, down here, these recombinations act on the genomes essentially because we're implementing things for vex so self is a vec um but up here self has become the recombinator itself and i don't know that we even ever i don't know that self means anything useful here and that we're ever going to use it um so this may end up being an associated function and not a method. And I think we need to select two parents as a consequence. So, boo, 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 boo. boom. So we'll say first parent and second parent. First parent and second parent. And then we'll say first genome is not self, but first parent dot genome. Boom. And let, let second genome, second parent dot genome. Oops, no, not that. Boom. And oh, it's an equal, not a colon. Okay, so now we've got our two genomes. Now we can assert that they have the same length. Uh, first genome dot len equal, equal other. And I guess we, should, we could say assert eek instead of assert bang. And then I don't have to actually put the a second genome ah dot genome fine ah it's just second genome what am I doing dot length there we go <clears throat> okay so 
we've gotten the two parents, we've used the selector to get two parents, we've gotten the genome out of both of those parents, we've asserted that those genomes are equal, and then we make a new genome by basically doing this. And I think, it, well, actually I won't, I won't copy it. Let me actually walk through it. Um, and, hmm. So at that point we can say that len is first genome.len and know that that's the same as both of them. So 0, 0 0.len, so for every position in the vector, dot map um, i, actually pause is probably better. Um, if range dot gen bool 0.5, so we're basically saying we're flipping a, a, a coin and if um, its heads will take the first genome in position I, otherwise we'll take the second genome in position I, and we'll collect. And that should give us a new Vec of T. Oh, it's pause now instead of I. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're unhappy about ownership. Oh, because we have T before we had bool. And we knew that we could make copies of bools freely. But since I've generalized it to T here, we're going to need to add a clone bound on T. Whew. T is clonable. And that didn't do the right thing. Uh, oh, does it need to be copyable? Um, copyable is a strong... Um, oh, and call clone. I get you. So we'll clone that. Now here's a place where it would be very interesting to have, like... A performance test with the the less general and the more general because here in theory we in a simplistic sense we would be actually making lots of clones of booleans although i'm guessing the compiler is going to be smart and not do something silly here but i don't really know that for sure um now while i'm here so i'm going to format again oh, okay yeah that's a little more readable i find having sort of a an if statement like this inside my map kind of icky and i feel like there ought to be a better way a more functional i guess way to do that but i'm not sure what it looks like um, and so if anybody has a suggestion, I would be more than happy to take one, uh, cause I do find like plopping this if statement in the middle of this nice map collect thing looks a bit like dropping some Fortran into some Haskell code. And that just didn't seem like, you know, doesn't seem like something one would really want to do very often, if ever at all. So, um, okay, so this all compiles. <coughs> um, 
Now, how would I use this? So we've added uniform XO. Oh, and it never, never refers to self. So I think we could remove that. Oh, keep the self. Oh yeah. Lots of things didn't work if I made the self go away. Oh, well, that's because this was up here. <laughs> so, um, so I'm curious, I'm just going to, for fun, does that compile now? That does compile. So what's the argument for keeping the self if there's not any reference to it anywhere? Is the argument that we might need it later? Or... And I, I, it's interesting to me that it didn't... Like, Clippy doesn't complain that self is there. Um, uh, whereas I would have thought that was an unused argument. Um, right. That makes sense. Especially up here in the general case. Because there could be recombinators that want to have internal state. And if we don't pass self in here, they would there'd be no way to write that. So even if this recombinator doesn't have internal state, it doesn't mean somebody else might not want to. I totally buy that. Okay. Put that back in. Um, so let's see what it's quarter till. Um so I think this is this is an interesting implementation of uniform crossover. Now the question is, how would we use that here? And oh, right. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's going to be a problem. Um, I need to use whole sentences. Here, I use the selector to get both parents, but that's not actually good because we often want to apply a thing to a selected parent. But do we really? Do we need it to be applied to a selected parent, or is it sufficient? Instead of selecting the parents here in the child maker, can we just call two point? XO and let it do its thing. Well, but it's not going to work if we want to chain that with a mutation because if the mutation chooses its own parent, we're not mutating the result of this crossover. We're mutating um, the uh, we're mutating the the thing that we chose, not the parent <coughs> that we cross not the genome we generated by crossover. So that's really not going to be good. Um, so we do need to actually, I think we do want to change this so that recombinate takes a genome and a population and a selector and a range and generates a new genome. Um... So I think we want um, genome, which is going to have this charming type, p colon colon individual as individual colon colon genome, co comma. And that's going to be here. And and then the first genome, everywhere I referred to first, we will get rid of that. And that'll just be genome. Okay. So that will take a genome and in this case, select a second parent and get its genome. 
assert that they have the same length, and then map across them, um, flipping coins as we go, and each position in the new genome will either be from the genome we passed in or the genome we selected, depending on the coin toss. Collect that together, and we win. Um, does anybody know, is there a way, given that this appears twice, is there a way to have somehow um, put something in the where clause that would have given that a small name like G? Um, like, I don't know, can I do... Uh, G colon P individual as individual colon colon genome, comma, and uh, no, cannot do that. Probably that syntax doesn't even make sense. Yeah, it didn't, uh, didn't, my guess there didn't work. Oh, well, because it does seem annoying to have this ginormous thing in two places. Um, uh, but there we are. Um, okay, so, um, oh, here we go. We got a suggestion. Try replacing the genome colon with genome Oh, I see right here, because we've said genome has to be vec t, in theory, maybe we can just say vec t here. Uh, oh no, this one, that's the general one. So that one doesn't have that property, but this one does. You might be able to say vec t here. And in fact, then we probably say vec t here. And that does all compile. Interesting. So we need the complicated thing here because this is general and we don't know what that's going to be. But here, because we specify that the genome is vec t, I can just start using vec t everywhere. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So then selector, no, 2, bit, two point x over mutate. So when we have a genome here, we ought to be able to call two point, call uniform xo to generate a new genome and then call mutate on that genome. So in theory, I'm actually comment that out for now and say let um, Let's just say genome equals first parent dot genome. So that gives us a genome. Now we want to uh, use, not that, this. We want to use uh, uniform XO to Oh, and actually, since we don't do anything there, we could do this. And then I think we can say uniform XO dot recombinate. So we're going to pass in the genome. 
population, the selector, and the range, and all of that's available. Boom. So in theory, that generated a new genome, and then we mutate that. And I'll leave the old mutation. Mutate one over length range. We'll want to clean that up later, but this is actually useful right now. And that ought to do the same thing, except it doesn't compile, of course. Um, recombinate unknown word. Type mismatch. Expected vecbool, but got a reference. Oh, mm. EC. You're going to just fix it. No, you don't. So, somewhere I need a reference when. I so is that so that's a reference I bet I need this to just be a reference yeah so this genome just needs to be a reference it doesn't need to be take ownership oh but that needs to be fixed here as well yeah, so we don't need ownership of the original genome. We ought to be able to um, just uh, have a reference to it. And that should, we should get a whole new vector back from this because that's going to be some combination of things from the other two vectors. So it'll be entirely different and we should own it. And then we mutate it, we get yet another new thing. We should own that. And then we will pass that ownership into this new EC individual when we um, uh, construct it. Whew, okay. I think that might be a thing start by running the tests. I have no idea if the tests actually cover the stuff that we've dealt with. I think they probably do, at least indirectly. And then we'll make sure we run, and we do, and that's awesome. Um, and yeah, so that's great. I think that actually works. Um, now, Second parent no longer used. Let's clean up some clippy stuff. Um, actually, I'm gonna put you down there, put you there, comment you out. I think I wanna, um, I'll do that offline, but I think I wanna do a performance test between these two things um, and see if there's any meaningful performance hit in using the more general um, version of things here, because I think that would be interesting. Um, so then let's see, we've got some other clippy warnings, line 11, we got a thing that isn't being used. Um, and an unused import linear crossover in this guy. And we'll just, we'll need to do linear mutation. Um, and that'll then make that go away as well, or change, I'm not sure which. Um, and then pipeline, it's got a warning, but that's just because we never really got anywhere with pipeline. So we still got to do that. So that's cool.
I think that that actually moves us in a direction and uh, we'll need to move some of this out. Like this recombinator doesn't belong in here because this is very general. So it needs to be outside of bit string. Um, and uniform crossover is more general than bit string because it's a vector of T. Um, so it probably doesn't belong here either. So I think ultimately be taking parts of things that were specifically implemented for vectors of Booleans and moving them out of bit string. Um, and then bit string will become, uh, I don't know if it'll go away entirely or if it'll just become concrete things. Might go, well, no, because there's stuff about bit string about the EC individuals here that probably still needs to stay. But I think a lot of stuff will come out of bit string and move into sort of a linear recombinator uh, package. So that's very cool. Yay, team. It is 11.56. I think I'm going to call that a win. I'll commit um, and save the work that we've got and make some notes. Um, but I think that was super cool. And I really appreciate all the new visitors. That was really nifty. Um, and thanks for all the feedback and ideas. Um, so just as a sort of scheduling thing so i do tuesday morning from 10 to noon that's this stream here and that's at least so i've been away for a month and and back after the holidays sort of setting things back up again um and so i'm moving some stuff around uh so tentatively that's going to be ec um uh in rust so what we were working on today, Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m., um, I'm going to do Advent of Code in Rust. I got through four or five of the exercises back in December, and then life got in the way, and yeah, I didn't get very far. So um, I think that that would be nice because it, it would be easier to drop in and out of and there'll be less um, uh, craziness go on. Um, and then uh, Saturday uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. is also going to be Advent of Code for now. And Sunday from 10 to noon is going to be EC and Rust or Web Dev with you and Wasm, if I can get some things sorted out there. Um, so that's the schedule. Um, and that's awesome. Um, thank you all for your time. Um, and, uh, I like Mr. Halsey's idea that you go raid somebody. Um, if that's what brought a bunch of people here, I appreciate it. And I'll have to turn raiding on apparently so that more of that can happen. Um, and if people have suggestions for streams that you think folks that have watched somebody program in Rust for two hours would enjoy, feel free to share. That would be great. Uh, yes. Uh, you had to do it by hand because I didn't have that turned on, but I'll try to fix that so that next time um, it can happen. So uh, thank you all very much. I do appreciate it. I hopefully will see some of you later, maybe tomorrow night. Um, so goodbye and ciao.